Hello and welcome to the Kufa Weekly. I'm your host, Kasim Hafeet. Well, firstly, if you've never heard of BDS, it is the Boycott, Divest and Sanction movement, and it specifically targets only one country in the world. Iran, maybe? North Korea? No, Israel. You know, that democracy and our ally in the Middle East. BDS's goal is, as stated by their leaders, to boycott Israel economically and isolate it internationally, essentially leading to the collapse of the Jewish state. Don't believe me? Read what their own founders say. Interestingly, one of their founders, Omar Barghouti, he got his master's from Tel Aviv University. Sometimes people just don't practice what they preach. But anyway, why am I talking about boycotts today? Has something significant happened? Not exactly. Actually the opposite. So it was reported that US security advisor Jake Sullivan was discussing normalization with Israel with Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Why is this a big deal? Saudi Arabia, like many Arab states, still have not established or recognized Israel's right to exist. We know that Saudi Arabia and Israel have been talking behind the scenes, but as of now, that normalization, that diplomatic recognition has not materialized. How does this link into boycotts? Bear with me one second. So the boycotts against Israel are not new. The boycotts against the Jewish people, even older. Similarly, the Nazis also attacked and boycotted Jewish businesses. Ultimately, the Nazis are a footnote in history, while the Jewish people are surviving and indeed thriving in their ancestral homeland, with Jerusalem as its capital. Fast forward just a little bit, Israel is reborn, the Arab League now declare a boycott of Israel, calling for a boycott of Israel altogether, and this is where a lot of the lack of recognition kind of comes from. And, you know, and on and on, these boycotts of Israel and Jewish people continue. But here's the interesting thing, especially with the Arab League one. Many of those countries who were pledged to this boycott of Israel are today not only recognizing Israel, but establishing friendly relations. Egypt and Jordan have peace treaties, and there is trade and cooperation. The UAE, Bahrain, Sudan, and Saudi Arabia now in conversations about recognition. I don't know how far down the line we are with that. It could be months, it could be years, who knows? This recognition of the Jewish state by countries formerly hostile is truly a blessing of the Abraham Accords which started under the former administration. But my, my, why I talked about boycotts, it's this, boycotts against Israel fail. The Arab leaders in the mandate learned that, the Nazis learned that, even the Arab states who just four decades ago were boycotting Israel, not even four, maybe a decade ago, are now turning around, recognizing Israel, and these pieces aren't cold pieces out of necessity. These are warm agreements, which is leading to so much growth in the region. So the two points I want to end with. One, boycotts don't work. You think you can circumvent God's plan by your boycotts? Good luck, not going to work. Sorry, Ben and Jerry's found that out the hard way, when they launched their own little boycott of Israel, and they found that many states have anti-BDS legislation, which Kufi has spearheaded, preventing states from doing business with companies that engage in a bigoted, one-sided, anti-Semitic boycott of the world's only Jewish state. Secondly, I think this is what's incredible. The very countries that are leading these boycotts against Israel in the Middle East are now embracing Israel. The Middle East is changing and the world is changing. We are seeing what were historically rivals and enemies embracing each other. There was a recent story that Israel and the United Arab Emirates, Israel, the Jewish state, the UAE, an Arab Muslim state, are working on a joint expedition to go to the moon. So you have Israel and the UAE are working together to send a mission to the moon. This would have been unthinkable just a few years ago. This really is one of the numerous blessings of the Abraham Accords, which started under the previous administration. This is making the world a better place. This is making the Middle East safer and bringing us closer to peace. And to every member of Kufi, I've got to say, you've been part of this. Through your advocacy, through your activism, through your relentless pursuit of telling the truth, we are seeing old enemies becoming friends. We're seeing friendship blooming in the Middle East. And we are seeing the hope of a better tomorrow being realized. 
This is Kasima Fees for the Kufi Weekly saying, for Zion's sake, do not remain silent. Thanks for checking out today's episode of Kufi Weekly. If you enjoyed this episode and want to stay up to date with the latest news from the Middle East, along with topics involving US-Israel relations, please be sure to like and subscribe. And remember to click that notification button so that you are notified every time a new show is uploaded.